Hey guys, welcome to episode, I believe it's 16 of Blue Mouse Podcast. I'm Emily, the designer behind the Blue Mouse. You can find me on Instagram as the Blue Mouse with an underscore at the end. And there are a lot of new subscribers. So I just want to say welcome. Thank you so much for subscribing. It seemed to jump up very quickly, so I don't know how you guys heard about the podcast or the channel, but thank you. It's really cool to see that there's now over 3,000 of you, which is insane. So thank you so much for joining me for a new episode. So I only have two little acquisitions, and I've been on kind of a project bag kick. I just keep finding really amazing new makers. So I stumbled upon this maker a few weeks ago and she was all sold out of the bags that I wanted, but she was doing a pre-order. So I definitely jumped on that because these are the most unique project bags I have ever seen. So it's from the Blue Rabbit House. This is her business card. How cute is that? So she is an illustrator and she draws illustrations and turns them into project bags. So she sent this little postcard with the order. How amazing is that? I can't draw to save my life. I'm horrible at it. I wish that I was good at it, but it's not ever gonna be one of my skills. So I have so much respect for people who are good at it. And she also sent me a little pin, which I didn't order, but such a cute little touch. I love it. I want to create one of those um, kind of embroidery hoop pin holders because I have quite a few that have just kind of collected over the past year and I have no place to display them. So I've seen people do like, they take an embroidery hoop and they put some kind of cool fabric in it and then they just stick all their pins and hang it on the wall. So I'm going to do that hopefully in the next month or two. Anyway. So those are kind of the fun things that she sent me, but what I actually ordered, and they're so cute. Oh my gosh, I am obsessed with this one. Look at that. Look how cute that is. I love it. I cannot wait to use this. And it's also the perfect size. I mean, I don't know exactly what size this was, I kind of forget, but I I think you could fit a sweater in this. It's quite big. So for scale, this is a sock sack and this is the new bag. So it's quite a bit bigger and I think that you could fit, you know, at least a shawl, if not a small sweater or the beginnings of a sweater in here. So this is my first one and I love it. I would totally get a whole bunch of these and I kind of plan to in the future. I would love, absolutely love a bag like this with a mouse, with like this kind of illustration with a mouse on it. Oh, I, that would be so cool. I'd love to have a logo with this kind of style of a mouse on it. Oh, it'd be so cool. And then I haven't really had any small pouches, like Notions pouches. So I got one of those and it has the brown bear on it. So the other one was the polar bear and this is the brown bear. It's so, so cute. So it's just a little Notions pouch. It has her little kind of logo in it for the Blue Rabbit House, which I love that name, it's so cute. And then, yeah, just a simple little zippered pouch definitely very well made. I love it. I've been on kind of this bag and notions pouch kick because all the bags I had before were just kind of things that I'd either just found or were given to me in like a goodie bag or something, which they did the job at that time, but they weren't things that I had chosen or that I really liked. And a lot of them had kind of like, what is it? Like, um, punny sayings on them or things like that and that's not really my style nothing wrong with that if you're into that that's your thing nothing wrong with that at all it's just not my style 
So I'd carry it around and people would always read off the little punny thing and I'd be like, yeah, you know, I, I, it's all I had, it's the only pouch I had for my notions and now I have one that I actually really like and that I picked out. So I'm very, very excited about that. This will not be my last purchase from her. It's so, so beautiful. And again, like I said, the most unique project bags I've ever seen. I love that she creates the illustration and then she puts it on fabric. That is so cool. So I will definitely be purchasing from her again. I believe she's all the way from Belgium. So that's really cool. I like supporting makers from around the world. So those were the only acquisitions I had. Like I said, project bag kick. <laughs> and then I only have two active whips. Now that I think about it, I have a third whip. So the first one is something if you've been following the podcast for a few weeks, you will be very familiar with. It is my Persephone mitt. Almost done, almost there. I will probably have this done today, but I've had to get the podcast film while they're still light. So this is all I have so far. And this, I believe, is the left mitt. Yep, this is what it looks like. It's got detailing on the edge here. Yeah, so I messed up with the first mitt and made it an inch too long in the cuff. So I don't mind. I mean, it just means that when I wear them, that they'll be less likely to let air in around my wrist. But I made that mistake on the first mitt, so I had to make the same mistake on the second one. And I'm only about, what is that, a couple inches away from finishing? Yeah, once this is rolled up, not that much further. I think I have like 12 more rows until I start decreasing, and then it should just fly by. So that's what I will be doing after I finish editing the podcast. And this is using Garden Wool and Dye Company yarn, and this is her Cormo base. Anastasia does naturally dyed wool, and it's Gorgeous. I cannot say enough good things about this Cormo. It's my first time working with Cormo and, and it will certainly not be my last. I've kind of started to seek out Cormo now. Like when I look at people's shop updates, I look and see if they have anything Cormo because it's just such a cozy yarn. I would love to make a sweater or a cardigan with this yarn one day. I'm going to try and go to Rhinebeck this year because I know that there's a lot of more natural fibers there and it's less of an indie dyed scene and more of kind of naturally from the farm fiber which I think would be amazing. So I don't know for sure that I'll be going because there's going to be Vogue Knitting Live here in Columbus in November and I'm definitely going to that. I would love to know if you're coming because that would be really cool but yeah I really really felt like I was missing out watching all the podcasts and stories from from Rhinebeck this past year so it's not too far from me it's kind of a drive I think it's like I don't know New York City is like a nine hour drive from here so I'm guessing Rhinebeck might be a little bit closer I could be wrong, I, I don't know, but yeah, we'll see if that's in the cards this year. If not, definitely next year. One of these upcoming years, I'm going to make it. It's going to be a goal. So yeah, I'll probably seek out some Cormo yarn if I get to go because I've fallen in love with it. And that is in my Birch Grove bag that I shared last week. So cute. It's a little sock sack. I love it. I it's it's so cute. I'm such a sucker for little like accessories like this. I can't be the only one. Come on. They sell out, so I know I'm not the only one. It's just if it's in a cute little package, I'm gonna be more inclined to buy it or use it. And then the next one, which doesn't look like much, but I have finally put some more progress on my Little Twig Sweater by Melody Hoffman. So I am a couple inches done, I'm a couple inches away from being done with the body. And this is worked from the bottom up, which 
I've talked about before is not my favorite construction. I really don't enjoy that. I much prefer top down because I feel like the length has a, or you have a better chance of getting the length right, especially in the sleeves. There's just something about working the sleeves from the cuff up that just doesn't really work for me, but we'll see. And I am using this yarn, which is the Spud and Chloe sweater. I've talked about that before. They sent me this to try out, and this was our agreed upon pattern that I would work on. So I'm still a little bit late, but this pattern has taken me a while because so far it's just been stockinette, really. And I have a hard time just sitting and doing a whole lot of stockinette unless I have something else to focus on. So what I found is that if I take this to home church, then during the teaching I can just sit and knit and knit and I'm focused on what we're talking about and I don't have to think about what I'm knitting. So by the end I've made like four inches of progress and I didn't even really have to think about it. So that's worked really well for me. If you can find a time to bring a mostly stockinette project to a social setting, then you can just knit and not think about it. and you kind of forget that you're knitting and by the end you've made a lot of progress. So yeah, I'm very happy to say that I am almost to the joining for the sleeves, although I have not knit the sleeves, but my favorite way of doing sleeves in the round is with 12 inch circulars. I find nine inch circulars when like working on socks to be too tiny and they hurt my hands, but 12 inch circulars are great. They are the perfect length that you can still hold them normally and they go by so quickly. Like Magic Loop takes forever for me because you just always have to stop and turn directions and then you get slight seam on the edge, but with this you don't. So I cannot recommend 12 inch circulars more. I use the Chagu Red Lace, which are my favorites. I get them on Amazon or my local yarn shop has them, so they should be pretty easy to find. A couple more inches on this and then I can do these sleeves. And then the yoke, which is the fun part. So I'm very excited about that. I just adore Melody Hoffman, who has the company Be Mandarines. So I just adore her. I think her designs are stunning and she's so, so talented. And I recently started like, I don't know, do you call it subscribing on Patreon or supporting on Patreon. I became one of her patrons, I guess is how you would say it. And she shares weekly videos with like behind the scenes of her process and things that she's working on. It's a lot like a podcast, but you only get them if you're like a certain level of her patrons. Um, but it's really so worth it. I really enjoy like listening to her talk about her process and colors and just the way she gets inspiration. I find that super inspiring. There aren't a ton of podcasts on here from designers perspectives. I know there are some, but it's something that I really cherish watching. So I've gone back to the very beginning, like the first week that she started doing Patreon and I'm watching from the beginning. So that's something I really enjoy. I did that with the grocery girls where I went back to their first episode and watched it all the way through. They're amazing. I, I love the grocery girls. So yeah, that's something it will take me a long time because she's been on Patreon for like two years. But I love that. I love having a ton of content to be able to go through. It's like finding a brand new show that has like six seasons and you know that you can just binge and binge and binge and just have so much content to watch. So yeah, cannot recommend her patterns enough. I've only knit one. This is my first one that I'm knitting, but I, I own or I have in my library quite a few and I've, I've read through them and I, I really like them. So I plan to make, I think, the treehouse mitts next. Those are just, just gorgeous. I love them. And my final whip, which you will have seen, I am redoing my new sweater, which is called the Walhalla sweater. If you've ever been to Columbus or you're from Columbus, you might recognize that. There's a, a street and a ravine 
So it's like a ravine with a street at the bottom of it called the Walhalla Ravine, I think. But everyone just refers to it as Walhalla. And that is what I named the sweater after. So the idea behind the kits that the dyer, Jake, from Ken Yarn is doing with the sweater is that he took three different important places that my husband and I have, like that we've had throughout our relationship. And he took a picture from each of those places and is dyeing up kits according to those colors. And so because of that, I wanted to kind of have some kind of special meaning like that with the name. So I was gonna name it after one of those places, but none of them really sounded right. And my husband actually suggested this name because he, where he used to live before we got married was right near Walhalla. And we would walk down there all the time, like in all different seasons together. And it was gorgeous, it's beautiful in the snow. I love it. So that just seemed very fitting. So this is the Walhalla sweater. It'll be out, I don't remember, March sometime, I think. Yeah, it's a fast knit, but this is all I have so far. I am about three quarters of the way done with the yoke and then I have the body and the sleeves. So this took me like two days of not straightforward knitting, but you know, a few hours a day. So yeah, I've shared this enough. I will share it again when there's more progress, but I've just, I'm just redoing what I've already done, which you have seen in older episodes. All right, so then the only thing I have left are two FOs. And one that I can really show you, one's drying on the blocking mat behind me and still like soaking wet. So this is the only one I can like truly show you and wear. But this is that new cowl pattern that I was teasing last week. I finished it, so I'll show you how it wears. I love it, I wore it out on Thursday after I finished it, and I love it. It's my new favorite thing to wear. So this is what it looks like. You've got a front panel like this, and then you also have a back panel. And it's like a normal cowl up top. It starts narrower and then it increases around here so that it sits a little bit better on your shoulders and then you split for a front and a back panel and the front panel has the lighter color as the dominant color which is the mohair and I don't know if you can see the halo can you see the halo on that it's incredible like I can just sit and see the halo on it it is insane. So one side has one color that's dominant, which is the light color. And then the nice thing about it is that it's reversible. And on the back, the other color is dominant. Now you of course don't have to do this. If you prefer one color to be dominant over the other, you can do that the same for both panels. But I like this because you can kind of switch it up. If you want it to be one color, you can wear it that way one day and then switch it up and make it look just a little bit different on another day with the other color being dominant. So yeah, this is my most favorite fitting cowl. I love that it starts like tighter to your neck and then grows. Not tight enough that it's going to like feel like you're choking, but definitely tight enough that you're not going to get that gap where you know, the wind can just go straight down your cowl and kind of defeat the purpose. I will be calling for testers early next week because it's already off to my tech editor. I love how fast knitting accessories is. Compared to knitting a sweater and then having to grade the sweater, this was a breeze. It took like a few days total. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Can't wait to do more accessories in the future. So yeah. This pattern will probably be out in just a few weeks. It's a very fast knit. And yeah, I'm really excited about it. I love it. And then the final FO is my, it doesn't have a name yet, but it's a new pattern that will be coming out in the beginning of March. 
It's the one, if you've seen, it has a very colorful yoke. I'm knitting it with Allie from Explore Knits Yarn. Well, I finished it last night. It's been languishing at the bottom of my bucket tote of projects, and all it had was just one more sleeve, and I was putting it off. So last night, I picked it up, and I was like, I'm doing it. I'm just going to push through and finish one sleeve tonight, and then I'm done. And... It took a while. <laughs> it's all stockinette until you get down to the wrist and then you have, I think, 11 rows of color work. Maybe 12 rows. I'm very slow at color work. I know some of you wanted me to do tutorials on it, but I'm not good at it. I need more practice before I would ever do a tutorial on it. I just kind of muddle through and it, it looks all right in the end. But yeah, so I blocked it and I was very worried about the neck because it was very tight and puckery before I blocked it and I was like really worried that I was gonna have to redo it. I've never done three color color work and the pattern is written for three color or two color. So if you don't wanna do three color, you can just do two. But I chose to do it in three and yeah, I'll put in some clips of what it looks like, but yeah, it's definitely still a little puckery, like it's still pulling a little bit around that part of the yoke, but not nearly as much as it was. Like you can tell that when it goes around the shoulder that it dips just a little bit where the color work is, but when you're wearing it, I don't think it'll be very noticeable. And it's just something that I will have to get better at. And yeah, if you're looking for the easier version, definitely do the two color one because you're Tension will probably be way better and it's easier. Trying to manage three balls of color while the like the reward, like what it looks like afterwards is totally worth it. It's a lot of work. So yeah, I mean the nice thing is that there's only a little bit in the yoke and a little bit on each sleeve cuff. It's a pretty easy and straightforward knit. A lot of my testers have been finishing up and I've been able to see their finished projects and they are gorgeous. I love it. Can't wait to see everyone else's and for you guys to be able to grab the pattern in a few weeks, month, something like that. Yeah, it needs a name. I really need to pick a name. <laughs> I've been calling it the Explorer Sweater at the moment, but that's not going to be the final name because that's too common. I like to try and find things that are a little bit more unique. So yeah, that's pretty much all I had to show. I did release a pattern this week. This is it. It's a double v-neck, long sleeve, long sweater. So it's made to be long and worn with like boots and leggings. But if that's not your style, it's very easy to shorten the body length so that it fits more like a normal sweater instead of like a tunic. Here it is. And this is what the v-neck looks like. And the back has an even lower v-neck. It fits very well. I've had a few glowing reviews from testers. I know one of them specifically said that she's never gotten more compliments on a hand-knitted garment than she does on this one. So that's really sweet to hear. I'll give you guys a coupon code in the show notes and in the description for being podcast subscribers. So it'll probably only last through maybe Monday night. You can always sign up to my newsletter, which is where you hear about new patterns. And every time I put out a new pattern, newsletter subscribers get a bigger discount than just following me on Instagram. If you're interested, I don't really send out very many newsletters because I don't release patterns super quickly. That is all the knitting content that I have for you guys. I'm going to talk a little bit about my life if you care to join me for that. If not, I'll see you hopefully in the next episode. But for those of you who do, it hasn't been very long since the last episode. I filmed that on Monday and today's Saturday. So less than a week. Yeah, I got so much done. Felt amazing. I just had so much admin piling up that, do you know when like things pile up so much that it stresses you out even more and you push it off because it's stressing you out? That's kind of how my emails were getting. Like I had... 40 some I think and now I have two which is good so I was able to get through a lot of the admin get a lot of videos done and pattern stuff done 
and check in with my current testers about patterns and yeah it feels good to have all of that done and to be able to kind of start fresh this next week and I got a ton of planning done for our trip we're going to Europe in May and I didn't get like specifics done like it's not a super planned out itinerary but I was able to map out all the places that we're going and the locations of them Google Maps has this really cool function where you can take like if you have a Google Drive account you can create your own map and like map things out and write descriptions and change the color of each pin so that's what I've been doing it's really helpful so that trip is almost entirely mapped out not planned out planning comes next that was something that was kind of in the back of my mind stressing me out like I have to do this I have to do this and I finally just sat down one night and worked on it for about four hours and was able to get almost all of it mapped out. It's something that I enjoy, but definitely is time consuming. So I just have to map out a little bit more where we're going in Switzerland. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to go see the Matterhorn because it's too far away and the train rides are absurdly expensive. And Zermatt, Switzerland, which is like the main city where you can see the Matterhorn, doesn't allow cars so you can only get there by train so I guess we'll just have to save up and go again yeah other than that my mom loved her gifts I saw her wearing one of the, the scarves that I made her on Thursday and she got a lot of compliments on it I know she really enjoys it she likes the kind of smaller tight-fitting cowl which I was worried it, it would be too tight-fitting for her but she loved it which is good. It's not how I like to wear cowls, but fortunately it's how she does. I don't know that there's a whole lot else. I'm gonna kind of take it easy for the rest of the weekend. It's been a very busy and kind of, not super stressful, but semi-stressful week. So I'm just gonna knit on what I wanna knit on tonight and tomorrow, and then we'll get back to business on Monday. But that's something I don't do very often. I'm usually working every day of the week. And this week I, I need a recharge kind of thing. And I want to finish my Persephone mitt. And I want to start on a pair of scrappy socks. I don't know if you can see all the yarn up there on my shelf. But I've got it all laid out in a line that I want to use for scrappy socks. So I know that Bethany of the Woolberry Fiber Co is hosting a scrappy sock along. Scrappy sock along. I am super late to join. I think they started mid-January, but it goes through March. So I don't know if I'll be able to finish by March, but I definitely want to join because all those scraps, I don't know, they seem to go together really well and I want to see what they look like in a pair of socks like that. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Have a great weekend, guys. Get lots of knitting done. Enjoy being around the people in your life and have a great rest of your day.